Hello, we're going to talk about databases in this video, looking at what they are, in particular focusing on relational databases and also introduce some key terminology which needs to be embedded for future videos on this topic. So, a database, something all of us would have heard of at least, but let's define it a bit more formally. So, a database is a collection of information that is organized so it can be easily accessed, managed and updated. So organization is really the key word here. And we're not just storing it for no reason, we're storing it so we can access it and manage it and update it down the line. Now, without the structure which is given by a database, it would become really, really difficult to work with large data sets. If you've got a thousand, a million, a billion items, without some structure, how on earth would you be able to use it? So for instance, here is some text. This is maybe collecting information about people, their name, where they live, and their age. So hello, my name is James, I'm 16, I'm from Crewe. I'm Casey, born in Manchester, but now live in Devon, etc., etc. You can, as a human, read that and interpret it and extract things like the names, ages, and locations, but not easy. If that was, say, a thousand items long or a million items long, it would be very, very, very time consuming. But for a computer, if, you know, for you to write some code to extract the names, ages, locations would be very tricky because there is no structure. It's unstructured data. There is no consistency. There are sort of like distractors, you know, Casey's born in Manchester but lives in Devon. Those sort of things would make it very difficult to interpret. So for a computer at least, having that structure is so much more preferable. So this might be a snippet from a text file, like a CSV file, where you've got the names, location, and age in a much more structured format. So we've got sort of a header row, name, location, age, and each bit of data is separated by a comma. This is called a CSV file. And this is really a database, not maybe what we imagine with a database, but this is a really simple database because in effect, we've got a table here. We've got columns and we've got rows. Now a database with only one table is called a flat file database. And they're not really so useful. They don't scale very well when you have lots and lots of data. But to introduce two important words, records and fields. Records are really our rows in the database and the fields are really our columns. So when you're talking about databases, think record for row, think field for column. So, you know, the record for James has got three fields, James crew is 16. The record for Mo has got Mo, Reading and 14 as those fields. So the intersection of a field and a record is the actual individual bit of data. And hopefully you can see why having this structure makes it much easier, you could, without too much difficulty, write some code which can interpret this database, not the text on the left. But we can get better than a flat file database. Before we do, let's just mention another key bit of terminology, which is primary key. So a primary key in database lingo is a field that is unique for every record in that table. So here is a table, an actual table this time, of teachers and their names, departments and lessons. Usually, if you see a table in an exam, you'll see obvious headings, obvious records, but usually there'll be a name, often plural, capitalized, etc. The fields should really be one word, or the field names at least should be really one word. In terms of this table, what field is unique for every record? Well, only one, that is teacher code. So if you are making a formal database, you need to make sure you have a primary key for every table. You must have a unique field, otherwise you can't uniquely identify a record. Here, we've got two Mr. Browns, downside of having a common surname. Without the teacher code, you wouldn't be able to distinguish between the two. I mean, one's science, one's computing, but how would you know if you had no other information? Whereas if you have a teacher code, it narrows it down to just one record. So this is important when we start to want to search a database or change a database. Doesn't matter what it is, it can be a number, can be a code in this case, often an ID. So watch out for these, you need to have one in every table. Now, if a slightly better database 
compared to a flat file database is a relational database, which has multiple tables which are connected. They're connected, linked through their key fields. So primary key is useful and needed to access each individual record, but also it enables you to connect up similar but different tables. So let's say we've got another table related to schools, which has different classes. So the class name, how many pupils there are, the room, etc., etc. Now these two tables are connected through a key field. The primary key for classes is most likely going to be the name of the class or the class code, I guess you could say, because it wouldn't make sense to have more than one class with the same name. Now the rooms and number of pupils and subjects are unique, but it'd be more sensible if name was our primary key. But also look, we've got teacher code. Now teacher code is another key field, but a different type of key. This is a foreign key. So a foreign key is a field in one table that is a primary key in another table. So teacher code is primary in the teacher's table, but because it's also in classes, it's therefore a foreign key. Subject, room, number of pupils are not foreign keys because they're not primary keys in another table. And name isn't foreign because again, it's not a key in another table and it's primary key for this table. So having a foreign key enables you to connect up these two tables. Because if I'm looking at 11A Co, a year 11 computer science class, I can see ABN is the teacher and so I can look up ABN in the other table. It enables you to connect them together. Now this all begs the question why? Why not just keep databases really simple as one table with all of your data in it? Well, flat file databases can lead to you having lots of redundant data. When things are redundant, you've got more of it than you need. If somebody's made redundant, they lose their job because they're not needed by the company anymore. And redundancy can be good in certain areas of computing. You might have a redundant server as a backup, but in databases, it's not good because you have wasted storage space. So here, I've got both tables combined into one big table, so a flat file database here, and we have some redundancy. The redundancy is in this top right area, where because ABN is teaching two classes, the data for him is repeated twice, which is just not efficient. I don't need to repeat it twice, I could keep it once. Now, the code ABN is repeated twice, but you have to have some repeats because that's how they connect up the tables. Teacher code would be a foreign key if these were two distinct tables. But that's wasteful. Now, if that was all 19 classes, all 19 lessons, that becomes especially wasteful. Now, we've also got a gap in the bottom left where certain fields are empty for our bottom two records. Maybe we haven't got assigned a class yet. That is wasteful too, but not quite in the same way, right? That could be redundant if I had lots of it and there were loads more gaps, but it's just not efficient. But that's our main problem, it's really wasteful. And it can also lead to more errors, in particular, inconsistencies. If you are adding more data to it and you're having to fill in more fields than are really necessary, it leads to small things being a bit different, it leads to errors. So here, for instance, these last few fields are different to the ones in the main table, possibly just because you are repeating yourself, more likely to make mistakes when you are doing things unnecessarily. So it's a good idea to keep things separate and use foreign keys and primary keys to link together distinct but related tables.